Well, now as you can see, we're gaining some elevation here. We're coming up from basically sea level, and we're going to be going up here on an ancient beach ridge. It's going to be about four or five feet higher than the current water table is. But I want to point something out here to you right now. Right here, this area right in here, this is all mangroves right here. Right about here is the high water line for the tidal swamp. And right over here is the storm rack line for storms. And look over here, as we gain an elevation, we now have an entirely different group of species of plants and trees. Here we only have three. But over here, we have, oh, a couple dozen of them. So let's go in here and see what we can find. Uh, ah, right here. This particular tree right here is called a buttonwood. It's often incorrectly referred to as the fourth mangrove, and the reason for that is that it's very, very close to the tidal swamps. Uh, however, it does not have those attributes that the, or the characteristics that the, uh, the mangroves have for uh, dealing with salt water. Uh, but they can take some indignation, but they have a regular root system. And they have berries, and these berries, of course, there's none on the tree right now. Maybe there's a few in here somewhere. No, I don't see any. They have, a, have these berries that resemble old-fashioned ladies' buttons, and that's how it got the name Buttonwood. Okay, and over here is a very common plant, a tree that uh, we see an awful lot of here in Fort Myers Beach and a lot of other beaches. This is a sea grape. And, of course, it gets that name from... Um, having these grapes, and of course I don't see any on this tree right here, but if we did have them on the tree, here's what the appendage would look like. The grapes would be up here, on this little appendage right here. And yeah, well that takes care of that. But uh, they're basically green, and then around September and October they start turning to, uh, to a purple color. And they start to ripen, and uh, you can take them, and you can make a jelly out of them. And ladies over at the historical cottage, they uh, make a practice of making that uh, sea grape jelly. Uh, let's continue mine up here a little bit. Uh, well, here's our old friend, the, uh, uh, the white indigo berry, the Randy Aculata. Uh, this particular ridge right here, if you look over here, you see we're going down there into the swamp. And we're going down, sloping down over there into what we call a black mangrove forest. Now, we'll talk about the black mangrove forest in our next video. Uh, I just want to talk about this little particular plant community that's in here. This ridge is very, very narrow. It is higher in elevation. And we see a different group of vegetation and species in here than we saw in the, in the hammock or in the uh, uh, tidal swamp. Um, going down here a little bit, we have, uh, this is Derbergii. This is coin vine right here. Very common. It's often found on sand dunes throughout the uh, on, on the barrier islands. It's found up here in this ridge. Uh, it's called a coin vine because when it has seeds, it has these little nickel-sized seeds like this. They're very thin. They hang like on a necklace, like along over in here. We might see one of those down here a little bit further down. And we even have an oak tree that got on here. So there's enough elevation here to get uh, well, a couple of oak trees get, got started up in here. Now this plant right here is uh, seen throughout the preserve in different communities, including this one here. It's found over in the hammocks. A lot. This is called a Mersine Floridana, or just a Mersine. And let's see now. A lot to see in here. Here's a, the Chacoca Elba. Uh, I've mentioned this over in the um, Maritime Hammock, or the uh, Snowberry. Uh, it should be flowering pretty soon, but it hasn't started to flower. It's a vine, and you see it's crawling all over this cat claw tree. Here's another cat claw right here. You see it has the two leaves that are opposite one another, and of course it has the little thorns up on the stem, like that. Here's a buttonwood tree right here. Oh, 
is a prickly pear cactus. We do have some species of that here in the preserve. We have some bigger ones than this right here. It has a very attractive yellow flower. Uh, you can eat those um, pods there. Uh, a good idea to take the uh, spikes off before you do. And here, of course, is the, uh, the buckthorn that we saw over in the um, maritime hammock, the Sideroxylin slesternium. Uh, it has thorns on it, so it'll be a good idea just not to touch it. And another very large oak tree here. This one's quite thick. He's got enough elevation here to get his root system down, but he's quite stunted. He's not very big, he's not growing very well, so I guess he's grown about all he's going to grow, and that might soon be the end of him before too long. And of course, the Spanish moss here, uh, which by the way is not a moss, it is a, uh, a bromeliad. It doesn't look like any bromeliads probably you've seen, uh, but it is a member of the bromeliad family. Uh, it's scientific name is Talanza eucinotes. Uh, it's a succulent. It uh, stores water in these little uh, leaves here like this. Uh, it's an air plant and it likes to grow on oak trees. The seeds will get caught in those furrows that uh, the uh, oak tree up there and has a very happy life there. And we'll move along here. Ah, here we go. Here's the quick one right here. Here's a dead buttonwood tree right here. And on it is several lichens. And these lichens are taking different shapes. Now a lichen is a combination of a fungus and an algae. A fungus cannot make its own food, but the algae can through photosynthesis. And this, it actually the fungus captures and holds in like, like a prisoner, the algae. And the algae makes food through photosynthesis and the fungus eats the algae. But of course it's smart enough not to eat all the algae at once. But the uh, genetic structure of the fungus is what sets the structure. Here's a structure over here you can see it looks like it's a blister, it's blistering like burnt skin or something coming up. Uh, so that tells us that's one kind of species of uh, fungus in there. We don't know what the algae is. There's another one right over there you see it right there? It has stalks. That's a another structure, so that would be another uh, species of fungus. And here's the third one right here. This one here, sometimes we call this Methuselah's beard, or grandfather's beard, or what have you. And it's very, very hairy, long strings like that. Something like the uh, Spanish moss over here. And of course, that would be another species of fun fungus. And again, we don't know what the algae is in there, but there's billions of different kinds of species of uh, of uh, algae. Uh, one other quick thing here too, while we're here, uh, you can see a lot of plants are growing on the ground here. This one here is another succulent, it's called sea purslane, right here, and, and you just had to have something to eat, uh, we can eat that. So uh, let's just take a quiet walk on down here, we're going to go down to the pavilion, and we'll see you there in a minute or two. We are at the pavilion overlooking Estero Bay. Uh, Estero Bay is uh, an estuary. Estuaries are a place where it's a shallow body of water uh, where fresh water meets salt water. And the salinity in here is substantially lower than it is in the Gulf. This is also the breeding ground for 60 to 70 percent of the species of the uh, Gulf commercial and games fishing stocks. It's also Florida's very first aquatic preserve. This area out here is a state preserve right here. This area right in here. Beautiful day out here. So we'll take a few minutes and enjoy this, uh, this view. And then we'll head on down to the uh, black mangrove forest. 
was over in the title swamp, I mentioned uh, something about propagules, and I didn't have any to show you in the trees, but here, this red mangrove right here has several propagules that are growing like the size of them right here. And as I mentioned in the, in the uh, title swamp uh, video, the embryo is alive while it's now attached to the tree. Now these will be dropping down pretty soon. They'll fall down, the tide will pick them off and they'll float them on out into the back bay there. And they can stay out there for several, several weeks, perhaps even months before they actually come ashore. But they actually have a, they're weighted. Their center of gravity is like right down here, the bottom part here, right here. The center of gravity is like right here. So it floats vertically. So this would be the top up here flowing up about the surface of the water. This would be standing down in the water. So when it comes ashore, it will land and it will start growing. Okay, okay this completes our, um, our little tour of the uh, Beach Ridge uh, plant community. And now we're going to go into the black mangrove forest community. So we'll just go on down this way here and stay to the left on the trail.